Hi, I'm Audrey, and for my From video this week, I'm going to be talking about character, and um, because I'm really interested in stories, and writing my own stories, and reading other people's stories, um, and a main part of that is the characters within those stories. So I'm going to try and tie a few different concepts together from a few different sources that talk about characters and how how we approach stories um, can be applied to our life and maybe the relationships we have within our life. So the passage I'm going to be reading is called The Dynamic Concept of Character. Um, character traits were and are considered by behavioristically oriented psychologists to be synonymous with behavior traits. From this standpoint, character is defined as the pattern of behavior characteristics for a given individual, while other authors like William McDougall, R.G. Gordon, and Kretschmer have emphasized that con conative and dynamic elements of character traits. Freud developed not only the first, but also the most consistent and penetrating theory of characters as a system of striving which underlies but are not identical with behavior. In order to appreciate Freud's dynamic concepts of character, a comparison between behavior traits and character traits will be helpful. Behavior traits are described in terms of actions which are observed by a third person. Thus, for instance, the behavior trait of being courageous would be defined as behavior which is directed towards reaching a certain goal without being deterred by risks to one's comfort, freedom, or life. Or parsimony as behavior trait as a behavior trait would be defined as behavior which aims at saving money or other material things. However, if we inquire into the motivation, and particularly into the unconscious motivation of such behavior traits, we find that the behavior trait covers numerous and entirely different character traits. Courageous behavior may be motivated by ambition, so that a person will risk his life in certain situations in order to satisfy his craving for being admired. It may be motivated by suicidal impulses, which, do, which drive a person to seek danger, because consciously or unconsciously he does not value his life and wants to destroy himself. It may be motivated by sheer lack of imagination so that a person acts courageously because he is not aware of the danger awaiting him. Finally, it may be determined by genuine devotion to the idea or aim for which a person acts, a motivation which is conventionally assumed to be the basis of courage. So, I think often our stories become the only opinions we have, um, and this, I, I watched a pretty intriguing um, TED video about the danger of a single story by Chima, Chimamanda Adishi, um, and she talks about how the single story creates a stereotype, and the problem with the stereotype is not that they are untrue, but they are incomplete. The one story becomes the only story. So this can apply to people in relationships, especially if we use Joseph Campbell's dis like diagram um, that looks a little bit like this. And I know the words are backwards, but this is the line is the threshold of consciousness. The point is the self or the true self and everything above the line is what we are aware of and everything below a line is our subconscious or what we're unaware of. So we have shadows, which is what we kind of operate from, but we don't know that we operate from. And then there is our ego box, um, which could also be described as the single story. So I think if... Um, so Joseph Campbell describes this form of a single story as our ego box, um, and it is the list of all the supposed to be's in our life um, that don't necessarily line up with the natural order of things. And so Chimamanda Adishi um, references that a single story robs people of dignity, 
And I think that in relationships, when we let the single story or or our ego define who a person is, we lose touch with who they truly are. Um, In order to truly know someone, you have to be intimately connected with who they truly are, not what your single story or ego projection um, thinks they are. The first step into trying to figure out who someone really is in a relationship, whether that's your parents, your siblings, your someone who you feel like you're in love with, is no like so the first step to knowing and loving someone, um, according to another uh, TED video I watched by Brene Brown, is believing you are worthy of love and belonging. And then the next step after that, um, that is actually a quote from Frome. He says that love implies responsibility, care, respect, and knowledge. Um, So if you take these two concepts, um, they require you to be intimately connected with that person. If you if you love yourself and you feel that you're worthy of belonging, and then you you have responsibility for someone else, care, respect, and knowledge of not only that other person but of also yourself, um, you can be intimately connected with that person. And it allows you to expand your ego box or your single story. And um, another quote by Chimamanda Adishi um, that deals with this single story concept is, when we reject the single story, when we realize there was never a single story about any place, we regain a kind of paradise. And I feel that that is maybe the most important part of this is that we have these ideas that we think are are so true and then sometimes the universe tells us things like n- the natural way of doing things is does not in line with our ego box or our single story and if we implement kind of those those vocab words into our into our life then we can come closer to um, being intimately connected with who people truly are instead of who we think they should be or who we wish we could be um, and I think once that happens, um, like she said, then there is, it's, it's really paradise because you're not living under all these labels and burdens um, and you can free yourself in a place where you can just be creative um, and regain a kind of paradise.